So up until now, all the discussion that we've done around these concepts of present value and future value and net present value, uh, all of that has been in a, well, simplistic sort of a setting in the sense that we have only considered investments uh, that go a one year out into the future. Uh, but of course, in the real world, when we're dealing with investments, uh, we are dealing with investments that yield cash flow uh, over multiple time periods. And so what we want to do now uh, is extend uh, all of the analysis that we've done thus far to account for uh, those types of investments as well. And uh, so do, in order to do that, I'm going to take you back to discussing this idea of future value. Only now we will be discussing this in the context of a multi-period setting. So instead of going out just one year, we'll go out multiple uh, time periods ahead. So let's, uh, let's uh, do that uh, using an example. So, uh, so let's suppose that you uh, invest $500 in a bank account uh, today, and that pays an annual interest rate of uh, 5%. So the question is, uh, if I ask you, what will your investment be worth in two years? Well, we have already talked about how much this investment will be worth uh, in one year, right? So, so if zero represents today, this is where you are today. And so let's suppose you have uh, $500 today. In, in previous uh, sessions, we have talked about how if you let this $500 grow uh, for one year at 5%, then if we say, what is the, what is the, uh, uh, I'll put it right here, what is the future value of this 500 one year from now? And we have talked about that how this is basically 500 uh, plus uh, the 5% that you can earn on that 500 which we saw solves out to 500 into 1.05 which basically is uh, 525 right so so over here you'll say that after one year I will, I will have $525. But now let's suppose that we want to go uh, one year further. So how much would your investment be worth in two years? Well, in that case, we'd have to extend our timeline a little bit more and go out two years into the future. Well, uh, if I now ask you how much you'd have in two years, you'd say, well, by the end of one year, I have 525. So two years out, two years out let me use a different uh, a different color here so two years out so future value two years out this would simply be well 525 and we are letting this grow further at five percent so this would be 525 into 1.05 right just the way we arrived at this guy right this guy uh, but notice Notice that this is actually um, this is actually this can actually be written a little bit differently. We already know that 525 is actually 500 uh, into 1.05. So maybe we can just rewrite this part as 500 into uh, 1.05, and then of course all of this uh, is uh, getting multiplied by this 1.05 right here, uh, which if you do the math comes out to 500 into 1.05 uh, squared, which uh, is uh, 551.25. So, so this was what we would call the uh, future value of our $500 two years, like two years into the future. Uh, if you can easily extend this analysis even further, if I asked you how much you would have in three years, we'd just say, let's extend our timeline a little bit more. So now we're talking about what you would have in three years. So notice that by the uh, end of three years, uh, sorry, at the end of two years, you already have 551 uh, 0.25. And so now if you're saying how much you would have in three years, well, the future value uh, three years from now would be 551.25 uh, into 1.05 by the uh, by the same principle. But notice that 551.25, we just showed that this in fact is just 500 into 1.05 squared. And so I can rewrite this as 500, uh, 500 into 
0 0.05 squared and all of this getting multiplied by 1.05 which is basically 500 into 1.05 cubed and uh, you can probably see uh, a pattern here the number of years that we are going out into the future that is the power that we are giving to 1.05 so we're taking our original number and we are just raising 1.05 to the number of years that we're going out into the future put differently uh, if we were going uh, you know to an arbitrary number like capital T years into the future where two could, T could be 4, 5, 8, 10, 12, 20, 100. In general, the rule would be that if you're trying to find out the future value T years into the future, all that we need to do is take whatever number we have today, which is what we have in the present, so whatever is our present value, and then we multiply it by 1 plus R, where R is the rate of return or the interest rate that we're getting and we just raise it to the power T. So that generally is the principle for finding out the future value uh, T years into the future. Uh, you just raise 1 plus R to the power T. Uh, one important uh, thing to realize here is this. Uh, notice that over time uh, our interest is getting compounded. What do I mean by that? When we start out by just putting in $500 into the bank, at the end of the first year we generate $25 in interest and therefore by the end of one year we have $525 but when we let that $525 sit for another year then something interesting happens in that second year we not only uh, uh, earn interest on the original 500 we also earn interest on this $25 worth of interest this $25 worth of interest that we earned in the first year and so the total interest that we end up earning in the second year is not 25 but 26.25 uh, where this extra 1.25 that we're getting is basically the 5% that we earn on the interest that we earned in the first year right so if you do this math this will come out to exactly 1.25 and so the extra 1.25 that we're getting in the second year is nothing but uh, five percent extra interest that we're earning on the interest that we earned in the first year and so uh, this is the idea of compound interest as we let money sit in for longer periods of time right so when when by the end of the second year when we'll have 551.25 if we let that sit in for the third year then in the third year we'll earn even more interest because we'll be earning interest upon interest upon interest and so this is the idea of compound interest and compound interest is usually differentiated from simple interest simple interest is simply the interest that you are earning just on the original principal amount right so in our case over this five-year period if i asked you how much simple interest have you you've earned you'd say well in the first year i have earned 25 because that's five percent of the 500 and in the second year too my simple interest is again 25 because we're only accounting for the interest that we're earning on the original principal amount in fact you would just do this uh, you know five times because you earn um, five percent on the 500 five times so you just add 25 uh, five times which is 125 but if you actually ask yourself now how much compound interest you've earned you'd basically end up summing all these amounts right the 25 but then the 26.25 the 27.56 and as you can imagine over time uh, as you let interest compound you earn more and more and more
So that's the idea behind uh, compound interest. Uh, to sum all of this up, uh, the general formula for future value is that you, if you want to find out the future value of any amount today uh, or whatever amount that you have in, in the present, you just take that amount, multiply it by 1 plus r, and then raise it to the power t, where t is the number of years that you are going into the future. Uh, sometimes you will see this represented as this instead of present value you will see uh, something like C0 appearing over here this is just notation uh, on the timeline uh, this zero that we have over here this represents today and so C here represents any any cash flow uh, that we are getting at time period zero so C zero or present value are basically the same thing because uh, what we're saying here is that in the present this formula is saying that in the present we have some present value and we want to find out how much it's worth going out into the future and uh, this formula is essentially saying the same thing. In the present, we have some cash flow, call it generically something like C naught, and then the question is, uh, how much would it be worth T years into the future?